beautiful Sunday. Roads are getting a little bit busier and it's terrific that Tim Buchanan was able to join us. A highlight, I think, of our lockdown period. Let me start by telling you about a guy called Dwayne Miller. This is a story that goes back to the 1990s. Uh, Dwayne was a pastor in Texas and he was struck down by a virus and he basically lost his voice. He went and saw 200 doctors, 63 specialists, and there are absolutely no improvements. Uh, being a pastor, he had no option but to step down because he couldn't use his voice and sought a job that actually didn't need uh, the use of his vocal cords. Uh, the family finally ended up in Houston, Houston, Texas, and uh, they attended a large church there. One Sunday morning comes the regular Bible study teacher. And if you're aware of life in American churches, there's usually a large Bible study before or after the main worship service. Well, the Bible study teacher couldn't conduct the service uh, because they'd fallen down sick. And the leaders of the church, knowing about Dwayne's background, asked him to step in and teach the class. He was hesitant to do it. He eventually agreed. They got a special mic set up so that they could pick up you know, just this sort of fraction of a voice that he was able to produce. And the lesson, which had actually been set up in a long schedule years before, was on Psalm 103. Uh, you can go to YouTube and actually listen to this story, listen to him live. You simply go to Dwayne Miller video. So before he comes to the Psalm, Psalm 103, Duane comments on Isaiah 53. So let me read to you just a couple of verses, verses four to five of Isaiah 53. The prophet writes, surely he, speaking of the suffering servant, has borne our infirmities, carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises, we are healed. And so Duane then continues in his very scratchy voice. Isaiah 53. It doesn't talk about physical healing. I'm sorry. That's just not the context. It's not the context. And, and to impress that it is, causes a misinterpretation of scripture. Uh, he then went on and he paraphrased the first four verses of Psalm 103, again in his very scratchy voice. So the psalmist says, I'm excited. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. One of his benefits is that he heals all our diseases. And in verse 4, he says, and he redeems me from the pit. Now, you know, I like that verse. I, I like it a lot. I've, I've had, and I've had these pit experiences. And friends, I've got to tell you, when you listen to this on the video, emotion just floods over him. The Lord had healed him on the spot. Here was this pastor who just declared that there's no physical healing now in the atonement. And the Lord, with a big smile on his dial, immediately on the spot, brings full healing to his throat and his voice. As I said, go and listen to yourself on YouTube, Dwayne Miller video. Such healings probably amaze us. I know it's a story when I first heard it that's just stuck in my brain. But actually, we shouldn't be incredulous because God self-describes himself as the Lord who heals you. It was in our first passage that Michelle read to us from Exodus 15. So if you've got your Bibles there or your Bible app, let's quickly flick back to that Exodus 15. So the context is the children of Israel, they've crossed the Red Sea. Uh, they've been journeying in the wilderness of Shur. Uh, it's hot. Three days in the wilderness, they don't have any water. They go to a place called Mara, and the water of Mara was bitter. And we read there, that's why it was called Mara. And the people complained to Moses and they said, what shall we drink? Verse 25, 
Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of water. He threw it in the water. The water became sweet. Now, here's a covenant that the Lord makes with the children of Israel, having just crossed the Red Sea. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. Please circle yellow mark, verse 26. The Lord said, if you'll listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what's right in his sight and give heed to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. And then they go to Elam, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees, and they camp there by the water. Grab verse 26. This is divine revelation. God the Father self-describes himself as Yahweh Rapha. Yahweh Rapha. And we would translate that as I am the Lord who heals you. Grab it. Healing is inseparable from who God is. God himself names himself as the healer. So in this Sunday series that we're going through, releasing spiritual gifts, today we come to 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9, and one of the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit is simply described as gifts of healing. So it's a double plural. What does that mean? It means that there are stacks of healing gifts. I'm only sort of speculating on this. Perhaps there are healing gifts for every kind of sickness and disease. And so we're going to focus on this manifestation, gifts of healings, for the next three Sundays. If you think about healing, everyone, every believer, probably everyone, has a view on healing. Why is that? Because we are all impacted by sickness. Uh, because as believers, we have either personally had an answer to prayer in healing, or we've heard of stories of someone else having an answer to prayer in healing. But also, very likely, uh, we've heard of cases, perhaps even in our own lives, where healing prayers have not been answered, at least in this life. So this topic it's broad, it's deep, and I've got to tell you, even in three weeks, uh, there's going to be limits on how much we can cover. But I do want to give you today an outline of what I'm praying that the Lord will lead us through over these three weeks. Week one today, the focus is on what does God reveal about himself in Scripture? What is his response to sickness? What is his desire to heal? Next week... I want to equip us all to confidently pray for those who are sick. And so we're going to go through what's simply entitled the five-step prayer model, and we're going to talk about the difference between command praying and commission petition praying. And then in the last week, we're going to look at the complexities. And you'll know this, there are lots of complexities. How was it in this case that this person wasn't healed? Are there barriers to healing? What do we do about medical services and doctors? Uh, is it appropriate for us to really model ourselves off Jesus in his earthly ministry? So in these three weeks, here's my prayer. I pray, pray that you will see that it is God's will for healing. I pray that you'll come to a point of confidence to step out in faith and pray for those who are sick, because that's what the Lord Jesus actually directs us to do, to heal the sick. And you'll just be equipped to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So for today, I've entitled it, Get God Right. And if you think about it, it always make, makes sense, doesn't it? To understand God, to understand his ways in every matter. But in my life experience, especially when it comes to the matter of healing, it is critical that we know God's will because what we believe and the way we minister as God's people must be based on the foundation, must be the authoritative word of God. Just have a think about it. the multiple factors that are at play. 
The world is broken and these bodies sometimes are born with parts that are not fully operative. And then separate, if you like, to sickness and disease, our bodies age. In fact, they start that aging process from the moment of birth. We also sometimes make decisions that are harmful to our health and other times other people make decisions which are actually harmful to our health. On top of all of that, the kingdom of darkness has a special hatred for mankind. Why? Because mankind bears the image of the divine. What else? The kingdom of God has come. Oh yeah, it hasn't come in its fullness yet, but it has come now. You go, oh wow, like lockdown's hard enough. And you give all these factors, it's kind of too much. I'm going to have a nano nap and go and take a Panadol. Well, let me say this. If you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus, and if we say we're a disciple by putting our faith and trust in him, that means by definition, it means by necessity that we are to live his life under his lordship. So if you're living under his lordship, you just can't go and make a detour around his explicit command, instruction, commission for us to heal the sick. He is so explicit to his disciples about that, and then it all gets wrapped up in the Great Commission of Matthew 28. That is, we are to be agents of divine healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, and physical healing. I'm committed to being at the Lord's disposal and bringing healing to others. Why is that? Because Jesus is my Lord and he is the healer. Secondly, I'm motivated by love and compassion for those who are hurting. Thirdly, I'm driven by obedience to the Lord, the one who actually gave his life for me Fourthly, I'm driven by the revelation of God's intention for us to prosper, for us to be well, and that it is so clearly revealed in Scripture. The ministry of healing is actually an integral part of extending the kingdom of God, and that actually is the name of the game. That's actually what we're called to do, to be God's agents in extending the kingdom of God. Healing is actually about the kingdom now, in the here and now. It's a demonstration of God's goodness, it's a demonstration of his power, and it's being made manifest. When someone is healed, it's like, wow, like the Lord really loves me. Wow, the compassion of the Lord for me, I was hurting so much. The other way I think about it, it's like healing is light which dispels the darkness. And we are actually light bearers because we're connected to the one. We are in Christ. We're in connected to the one who is light. And the Lord Jesus does not mince any words when he describes the reality of the total reality that we live in. Hear his words in John 10 verse 10. This is God incarnate speaking. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you know these words, just say them with me. I came that they may have life and life abundantly or life to the full. <laughs> could, you, could you come up with a greater contrast? Satan, the evil one, the devil, the accuser, he seeks to take away life and joy from mankind. But in contrast, Jesus comes to give life. Indeed, to give abundant life. Sickness arises fundamentally from the work of Satan in the world. Go back and think about it. the serpent who comes and tempts our first parents. They forsook their allegiance to the living God and the results of that rebellion were and are disastrous. So what does God the healer do? 
He comes as healer. And he comes as healer in the total sense of the word. Think about how Jesus' ministry was described in the Acts of the Apostles. Acts 10, 38, you could read the section 36 to 38 if you've got it there, quickly turn to it. I've also noted these scriptures in the supplementary notes that have been emailed out. Acts 10, 38, hear this. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. There is this underlying problem of sin that Satan brought into the world. So in the sense of the fall, back in Genesis 3, we could say that all sickness is from the devil. But hear this, I'm not saying that every single sickness that a particular person comes down with is caused by a demon. Do you get it? That from the fall, we can say that, yes, sickness is from the devil. But don't run too far with that, that every time you've got a cold or a sore throat, apart from going and getting a test at some drive through COVID place, don't just immediately assume that that's the specific work of the kingdom of darkness. But I'm going to talk about that in the third week, because in my experience, it's actually more often than what we might otherwise think. The healing that Jesus brought us is designed to undo everything that the devil has sought to do in destroying us, seeking to destroy us emotionally, seeking to destroy us spiritually, seeking to destroy us physically. And 1 John 3, 8, which we looked at a little earlier in the year, it's like this is a refrigerator verse in like font size 42. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. And the word destroy in the original is strong. It's the sense of annihilating. He came, God in human flesh, Jesus came to annihilate the works of the evil one. His purpose was to undo all of those different ways, all of those sort of unusual little roots of access that we can end up giving the enemy in our lives. He came to undo that. All those roots of access that Satan uses to afflict us and damage us. And I know here at Oak Tree, uh, from when we, if you can remember this, the fun of us all being physically together. And I think in my early days here, I gave a Smith Wigglesworth quote and I kind of said nervously, oh, does anyone know Smith Wigglesworth? And there was this mountain of hands that came up. So I know there's some Smith Wigglesworth fans. Let me give you a quote from Smithy. I wonder if we can call him Smithy. Anyway, we have. He goes, as far as people go, my heart is full of love and compassion for all but I fail to see how you will ever reach a place where God will be able to use you, listen, until you get angry at the devil. Smith Wigglesworth and another guy by the name of Andrew Womack, both of them mightily used by the Lord as ministers of healing, they say that you've got to get to the place where you hate sickness and disease. Does that sound full on? They say that you need to take a stand against sickness just as much as we take a stand against sin. So, friends, as we gather today, Zoom land, whatever you're struggling with, spiritually, emotionally, physically, let me encourage you to come today with expectant hearts. Come with expectant hearts before the Heavenly Father. Come with expectant hearts as we get stuck into God's word as to what is said about healing. Because who knows? It might be this day that we have a Dwayne Miller encounter. It actually might be this day today where there are many Dwayne Miller experiences as you hear 
what the Lord says in his word. Come, come with expectant hearts. If we're going to fulfill the destiny that the Lord has for us individually, if we're going to fulfill the destiny that he has for us, Oak Tree as a church, we have to be absolutely convinced in our heads and then let what we're convinced of in our heads sink into our inner person of these truths. Truths like God is good, he is always good, and he never deviates from goodness. Truths like God is the God of healing. He calls himself Yahweh Rapha. Truths like the Lord does provide for our healing. How does he do it? Jesus comes to take away our sins. Sickness and infirmities are rooted in the sin that came to us at the fall. And Jesus comes to reverse the effect of sin and he comes to take away our sickness. So let Exodus 15, 26 seep deep, deep in. Ah, oh, the one I worship is Yahweh Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. And let Isaiah 53, the crown jewel in the Old Testament on the atonement, let it sink deep. Please turn to it with me, Isaiah 53. If you've got a hard copy Bible there on your app, Isaiah 53, and I'm going to read uh, from verse 4. We read this, and I'm reading from the NRSV. I will put in a word here and there from the NIV uh, because that's what you might be reading and just so that you hold all this together. So the prophet writes, Surely he, who's he referring to? The suffering servant. This was a prophecy made, say, 800 years before the coming of Jesus. It's a prophecy of Jesus the Messiah. Surely he has borne our infirmities, if you are reading the NIV, pain. He has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. This word born is really important to grab hold of it, the depth of its meaning. It means to lift off. It means to carry off. It also includes the idea of wiping away. You might remember when we looked at 1 John 2, we were speaking about the cross. We spoke about two main words that describe what happens there, that unusual word propitiation, and the other word expiation. Expiation, the taking away, the wiping away. This is the concept that Isaiah is speaking about here. So when Jesus bore, when he took up these things, he carried them away. He, in the sense of he wiped them off. What did this Messiah, who was regarded so poorly, as you read verses 1 to 3 of Isaiah 53, what is it that he carried off? What is it that he wiped away? The prophet says, I'm glad you asked that question. Because I'm going to give you a list of them. He took away our infirmities in the NIV pain. The Hebrew word means this, afflictions, diseases, sicknesses. This is what the word of God says. He carried. He carried is the idea of a bearing a burdensome load. He took everything that weighs us down whether it is physical, whether it is emotional and mental pain. He bore that. So this could be referring literally to people who are physically sick or who are suffering mental pain. And Isaiah goes on in verse 4. So he took up our sicknesses, he bore our physical and mental pains, yet we, yet we, we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. See, the context of this, as the prophet Isaiah is writing, he's going, look, to you who are listening to this, you actually thought that he was dying for his own sins. No, 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 no. He wasn't dying for his own sins. He was actually carrying our sicknesses. He was carrying our pains. He was carrying our diseases. He was carrying our sins on the cross. And he goes on, verse 5. 
but he was wounded, NIV, pierced. He was wounded for our transgressions. What are transgressions? It's stuff that we knowingly do and commit, which is completely out of whack with God's holy order. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed. Get the sense of a stone being shattered. He was crushed for our iniquities. Oh, this is even more than transgressions. This is the idea of perversities, depravities, guilt, gross evil doing. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, by his scourging, by his stripes, we are healed. So, without me giving that amplification, here verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. When Jesus dies on the cross and pays for our sins, everything that we need for life and godliness was paid for. And so in that sense, it is right and true to say that there is healing in the atonement because healing is part of God's restoration. Healing has been made available to us and it is fully available. So what does that mean? It means I don't have to go to the Lord and go, oh, Lord, uh, uh, I'm really struggling. Is it actually your will to heal? No, no, I don't have to do that. My confidence is it is his desire. It is actually his revealed will paid for at the cross. But I think I can just about hear questions that might come at this point. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Can't really argue with it, okay. So I accept there's healing in the cross. Oh yeah, we're healed in heaven. And that's true. That is completely true. We're fully healed in glory. But Jesus inaugurated the kingdom of God in the what? In the now. And Matthew 8, if you'd like to turn there, which was our second reading, Matthew 8, it begins with Jesus healing the man with leprosy. And then he heals the paralyzed servant of the centurion. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. And that's a really good thing to do to keep our mother-in-law in good shape. And straight after the healing of Peter's mother-in-law, if you go to verse 14, this is what we read. Actually, if we go to verse 16. That evening... They brought to him, Jesus, many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he cured all who were sick. Matthew, Matthew's gospel is being written to a Jewish audience. They would have known about Isaiah 53. Like, as I said, this was the crown jewel on the atonement. It's the longest explanation of the atonement in the Old Testament. And Matthew, remember, inspired by the Holy Spirit, he gives the correct interpretation of Isaiah 53, verse 4. And we have that in verse 17 of Matthew 8. Here's what the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit through Matthew says. This was, what was the, this? All these healings that we've just read about. This was to fill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Matthew declares that Isaiah 53, 4 to 6, really means that the death of Jesus was meant to encompass not only our sins, but what else? Also our sicknesses and our infirmities, those weaknesses, those frailties of body. A guy by the name of Ken Fish, who heads up a ministry called a kingdom fire ministries, someone I know personally, has been mightily used by the Lord over many years uh, in a ministry of healing and deliverance. And in this week's bulletin, I've uh, put a link in there for you. You could go to an online free mini course on healing. There's a larger course that you can sign up to, but there's five or six of these sort of little videos as an introduction to healing, which is really great value and really super teaching. 
Here's how Ken sums it up. I love this. Many Christians are being taught that Jesus came to take away their sins. But what they may not understand is that sickness and infirmity are both rooted in sin that comes from the fall of mankind. Jesus doesn't just reverse sin. He reverses the effects of sin. And with this understanding, we can have confidence as we pray that healing is available. Ken says, on many occasions when I've taught this passage, which passage? Isaiah 53. People in the audience, hear this, have stood up to declare that they've been healed as they hear the word of God read with conditions as wide ranging as sciatica and injured backs to headaches, to paralyzed legs, to thyroid conditions, yes, to cancer. Faith arises in our hearts when our understanding actually aligns with the teaching of scripture. We often pray for people by, uh, who are sick by laying hands on them. But there are times when people are healed because they understand that quote, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Friends, this is a big salvation. It is a powerful salvation. And God offered it all to us. Why? Because he loves us. Because he adores us. I wonder as I say this, whether someone with a degree of skepticism who knows a little bit about my life. Maybe they mightn't say this to my face, but maybe this thought might percolate through their mind. Something like this. Okay, so how did all this work out for you, Pastor, in your life, in your family, uh, with your late wife and your disabled son? How did it work out for you? So here's what I would answer to that sort of question. I go, yeah. I've seen God's mighty hand of healing in both of their lives. They are fully and totally healed now in the presence of the Lord in a state of ecstatic joy, absolutely conscious in the Lord's presence. But in this life, in this life, with serious sickness impacting both of them, divine healing was experienced and it was witnessed. In the case of my late wife, I received medical information after her promotion to glory, which was back in May 2011, that her particular sort of leukemia and the complications that were with it would have been expected with a high level of probability uh, by the consultants that it would have taken her out within three years after diagnosis in February 2001. She actually lived 10 years from that <coughs> first diagnosis. And those extra seven years were precious. They were very precious for the rest of the kids in the family and they were significant years as far as her ministry in the church and particularly to other women. Well, what about the son, Brendan? You know, at the age of six, with just massive damage in his disabled body to his lungs, the thoracic consultant at a very major hospital doubted that Brendan would get to 12 years of age. Brendan went home to glory October 18, 2018. He was 27 years of age. Let me tell you, if you knew anything about Brendan's condition, that is nothing short of a miracle given his respiratory system that it could have lasted for so long. And Brendan's life was a stunning witness. It was a stunning witness to, in a, in a broken body, to have this extreme sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And he just 
overflowed with love. But there was more than that. The, the Lord revealed to me in the hospital just before his promotion to glory. I had a sense of this, but this was a very clear revelation. That Brendan had actually exercised an amazing, a stunning ministry of intercessory prayer. Yep. Brendan McArdle with disabilities more than the length of your arm. A ministry of intercessory prayer. So when the enemy threw the kitchen sink at me and he might have got some garden chairs and tossed them as well, when I came to a point in my life of saying, I am actually going to follow the Lord obediently and seek to obey all of his commission. So when all that stuff was flying, who was interceding? Well, many brothers and sisters in Christ, but young Brendan. The Lord healed his lungs and more than doubled the expected life expectancy of him. I know the healing power of Jesus. But, but what I actually stand on is what God has revealed in his word and what Jesus actually commissions, instructs us, commands us to go and do. Not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm a disciple. I'm a disciple of the one who is Rapha, who is the healer. Yeah, I get it. The kingdom is still to come in its fullness. Uh, these bodies do fail and die. But healing now is a beautiful taste, a foretaste of what's to come. And it's purchased in the sufferings and the death of Jesus, applied to our account, appropriated by faith. Isaiah literally says this, at the cost of his wounds, there is healing for us. And as well, obviously, of spiritual healing, that includes emotional healing, and it includes physical healing. So what do I do? I go to the Lord as if it was a promise. And if I don't receive it all in this life, in this age, I recognise that I actually don't receive all of the benefits of the cross in this life, but I will in the Lord's presence. Friends, we can sit back and wait till all our questions are answered. That will be a long sitting back. Uh, we can listen to cessationist teachings on the internet that all this stuff doesn't happen now. Not sure what we do with verses like Jesus saying yesterday, today and forever. We can do that. Or we can simply get on our bikes and follow Jesus' commission to go and heal the sick and to step out in faith. To bring the Lord's power, uh, to bring his love, to bring his care, to bring the compassion of a magnificent God, Yahweh Rapha, to a very hurting group. Let's just take a moment of silence. The Lord will be speaking to each of us. And then we're going to have some words of a prayer uh, as I start to speak up on the screen. I've also included uh, this prayer in the notes that have been emailed out. Let's just come before the Lord quietly. Let me lead you in prayer, invite you to join in this prayer. If it helps you in just getting this solid in your mind, to stand, I invite you to do that as we pray. You might pray this with me. Lord God, we proclaim you as Yahweh Rapha. You are the Lord who heals. Lord Jesus, not only do you desire to heal, but in your sufferings and death on the cross, you carried our diseases. 
we declare the truth of your word that by your bruises we are healed. We appropriate that truth by faith. Father, help us to have obedient hearts, oceans of faith, and abounding love for this broken world. We want to be your instruments in order for your will to be done on earth as in heaven. Holy Spirit, come. Manifest your glorious presence through Oak Tree, through every member of our church family. Bless me, bless us with gifts of healings, not just for our own health, but for destroying the works of the devil and extending the kingdom. We pray that every person we speak healing over would see that you are good, that you are mighty in power, that you care deeply for them and that they would turn to you in repentance and faith. And we pray all of this in the almighty name of Jesus. Amen.